lovely audience back to the GL event stage here. Uh, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Hope you've had a wonderful day so far at Event Sustainability Live, uh, sponsored by the wonderful Evolution Dome. I love all the lights around here. It's very nice to have lots of different colours going around to engage everyone and capture everyone's attention. Um, but yes, thank you so much for being here. Uh, just a quick reminder, please do use the headphones that you'll find on the backs of your chairs. That's where you'll get the best sound, especially as one of the speakers has been a bit on the blink. So uh, just make sure that you can hear everyone properly because we've got some wonderful chat coming your way uh, over the next 40 minutes or so. Um, over there, you've got a QR code to ask any questions. It's going to go straight to our wonderful host here. Uh, Mr. Alistair Turner, the CEO of APR. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to introduce this wonderful group of people you've got. Brilliant. Thank you, Benj Benjamin. Um, yeah, so look, first of all, thanks so much for taking your time to come to this uh, session. It means a lot. Um, I appreciate that there's all sorts going out there, lots of business being done. So the fact that you come to the session means a lot to us. So, so, so thanks very much for doing that. What I guess what we wanted to do is sort of achieve two things out of this session. First one is... Um, I, I, I work with the lovely folk at GES um, and, and Leanne here, and we've been working on this project about understanding your full supply chain. So when looking at events, to understand that there's these hidden partners, these hidden companies that perhaps you don't know and should spend some time getting to know, or perhaps you do know that need to ask more questions to. And we want to bring some of that to light about the amount of value that they can have around the event. Um, the second thing we want to do is, was, was bring Adam in as well and look about this specific event and see where that had come through. Now, hey, look, this is a journey without an end, but we wanted to kind of set the, set the benchmark in terms of where we are at the moment. So that's, that's kind of what we, we were going to do. So what I thought would be, be good to start with is just to ask Leanne, first of all, just to give us a bit of an... First of all, introduce yourself and give us a bit of an information about where you sit within GES and um, your role and where you go. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm Leanne Griffiths. Um, I'm the Business Development Director at GES uh, in the UK um, and predominantly work with exhibition organisers, be it on trade shows, conferences, congresses, um, to help get uh, core services into an event. So much like this event in here, um, get your event up and running with your exhibitor base. Fantastic, Leanne. And Adam, just in case anyone doesn't know you from your slightly worn look, you have something to do with running this event. <laughs> I do, yeah. So um, my name is Adam. I am the co-founder of Event Industry News, which is the media publication that organizes this event, as well as Event Tech Live and Event Tech Live in Las Vegas. Fantastic. Right. Throughout this um, discussion, please lean in. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on Slido. Um, I have no problem, despite the fact that Event Tech is over there from the age of raise your hands. If there's anything you want to delve deep into, um, there's nothing worse than just project, project. If you want to us to have a conversation we really want to do that with you guys as well so please please do so but I thought we'd start with yourself Leanne can you just give us a bit of an introduction in terms of where GES has fit into um, this particular show please absolutely so um, we started working with Adam Paul and the team back in 2021 looking at how we could deliver 2022's edition of the event um, and luckily moving into 2023 as well so from my side, we worked on what packages we could offer um, and what we could do from a core services element. The event moving over from the Truman Brewery was a, you know, a big step for um, Event Tech Live at the time, um, moving into such a big space with, from such a unique venue. Um, so we worked with a team to, to get that done and get that done successfully. And, and then into this year, looking at, with the addition of event, event Sustainability Live, what products and what we could do to, to help the guys with their, you know, the end goal of being a fully sustainable event. So we engaged our services in that respect. Fantastic. You very kindly put together some stats. I have. Can you just give us a, 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 a what we want to be really careful of is that we don't show off too early. <laughs> I've not signed these off. <laughs> so if you can just give us some stats in terms of, I guess, where your satisfaction is at and the sort of things we're achieving already uh, that, you know, we should take a moment of a uh, mutual back slapping off. <laughs> Absolutely. So from, from our side, I think where the, the hidden supplier subject comes in is that people have a perception that core services, supply, core services aren't particularly sustainable as a, as, a, as a solution. So 
we've been working through the years to, to, to generate our products to be more sustainable. So um, from a GES perspective, the, the vision on this show is that we are 100% sustainable in the products we have delivered to, to these events. So um, from a build perspective, the staff, you know, we've done just over 900 square meters of build with uh, reusable um, modular systems. Um, and from an electrical perspective, I mean, they even got the stats of we've used 900 linear meters of plug and play cabling, the fittings, everything goes back into stock to be reused again, which is, you know, a, a really great thing. Um, from graphics, so we have done 1,110 square meters of graphics on the delivery of this event across organizers, exhibitors, and the features that, you know, we're sat within a, the stage right now. Um, of which all of the graphics go back into some form of, of reuse, recycle, um, as a waste chain. So, you know, from, from that side, GES are zero to landfill on this event. Fantastic. Um, I just want to bring yourself in, Adam, as well. I mean, hey, look, we're, we're really proud of what GES has done. But again, if you can set us this idea of hidden suppliers, what sort of other businesses are you working with? Of course, GES, but other businesses you're working with, this sort of um, that it's worth underlining the contribution to, to you guys trying to become a, a sustainable or a sustainable show as ever. Absolutely. I will make one amendment to Leanne when we first started working with GES. And actually, we worked with GES on our very first show. This might have been before your time. And actually what we did was we created furniture and brought furniture in from uh, reused pallets, which then got reused for something else. And we also had features and things hanging from the ceiling which were adding colour and, and other features to the show which were again from uh, reused mater recycled material and getting used afterwards so we've actually had a relationship on that side although we've not worked through with every single year um, going on to the the event this year um, there's so many and I think a couple that I will like call out to are not your everyday Ryan Walker the, the, the founder and CEO of that company is coming into the industry having had a huge experience in event delivery, having work, worked with uh, Smart AV, which is now Four Wall, another supply chain. So he's, he's, he's been in the trenches when it comes to delivery of, of events and things being logistically delivered to it. And he's come at the approach that his furniture is extremely high quality. If you've been sitting in the central lounge or if you go over to his, sta over his stand, everything sourced from places like Italy, it would look it wouldn't look out of place in a high-end hotel or a restaurant or in your home. It's the kind of furniture you'd want to sit on in your lounge. And everything's sourced from a sustainable solution. He's got chairs made from Carlsberg, bottles that have been recycled. And he's actually gone to that one extra step of now you can actually go and when you sit down at, at tables or on the furniture, you can see where it's come from and things like that. That was a really... Ryan actually takes this one step further. Um, Ryan actually worked with Vista Events, who had delivered an event on uh, Tuesday, it was, and worked with Vista Events to go and collect plants and foliage from an event that they delivered at Houston, and rather that gain shipped back to their warehouse and warehouse, brought it directly across to the event, and we now have that fit. So the, the plants and foliage that are at this event we're actually at another event just on Tuesday, so it didn't go. It didn't have to make extra steps or anything like that, and it came back to ours as well. Who else? There's so many. I think one of the steps that we've taken with ESL is to centralise and use as many of the supply chain that we're using on Event Tech Live, also for this event. So that's reducing the impact and making sure that we have a better connected event from that perspective as well. Put me into your mindset when you said. I bet two things happen. One is I'm going to launch a show called Event Sustainability Live. Two, at some point someone's going to tell me that I've not been sustainable at all enough. Um, but this isn't a perfect time of being Event Sustainability Live. How did you kind of cross that? How, how, do you, how have you approached practicing what you preach in a serious way? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, sustainable practice is something that we've, we've had lived and breathed as much as we can through our evolution of Event Tech Live, which is now 10 years old. You know, we've never used carpet. That's not to say that carpet doesn't have its place or can't be sourced sustainably or, or reused, but it's one of the first areas as a young company, a young event that had very little experience in this, we felt we could make a decision on very, very quickly and easily. It also helps that I'm from Yorkshire, so we're extremely tight, and if we don't have to pay for it and we don't have to do it or we can reuse it, we're, we're all over it. Um, 
there's other things and there's, there's more practical approach the way that we travel as a company we really try and get you through from, a, from the lifeblood and we don't do things just off a whim event sustainability live came off data and that data came from other events that we produced so we launched the uh, breakfast briefing in 2019 uh, in partnership with GES which was an event that has grown and Ali you've hosted that and we brought the panel from that session from that event back to the stage this morning to talk about the evolution of where we are since we first having that conversation so we, we knew there was an appetite there there's lots of other events that are obviously doing things around sustainability and we also see that uh, appetite for information knowledge and connectedness on event industry news when we publish anything related to sustainability we knew there was an appetite there why have we launched the event when there are other events already talking about sustainability? Well, our approach is slightly different, and we hope that's one of the USPs of the show. Many other events tend to talk about sustainability from a very, very singular perspective, whether it's, the meet, whether it's a meeting, a conference, a trade show, um, a, a corporate event, et cetera, et cetera, an agency event. And the, the way that Event Industry News has grown, our belief is that as an industry, we can learn from each other. Even if, we don't do some, even if we don't do festivals, there are still things we can learn about how festivals are produced, how they are produced sustainably, how they go about things, their methods. And I believe that's what ESL will do, is it will give us a platform to learn from each other from cross-sector so that we can then apply those learnings to our own event and overall be a better, more sustainable industry. How, however, <laughs> yeah. every time you, do, do you, was there not a part of them, like every time I make a decision on carpet, someone's going to say, well, you should have done this because that would have been more sustainable. Oh, we're going to produce these chairs. Oh, you shouldn't have done them. They're not sustainable. Oh, we're going to use this food supply. Oh, yeah, you should have done something. Uh, how, uh, just honestly, because I, I think that's the pressure on every single event organizer at the moment, which is every delegate is telling you that you should have been sustainable here, here, and here. Uh, how do you handle that? Or do you handle that? What's that come down to? Well, first of all, I'm open to criticism. You know, I think that's the way that you grow and you learn and you learn from others because other people have different experiences, they have different opinions. I think being open to changing your opinion on something, don't be steadfast in the fact that this is the way we do it and it's the way we've always done it and we know best because that's not how you learn and grow. So I am sure and I am open to anybody's feedback, whether it's people sat at this stage or any of the exhibitors and stuff after the event of maybe if you do it this way and you approach it this way, it will be more sustainable. Again, we're going back to data and we're working with Isla and Trace to try and measure everything. We're working with GES, we're working with Excel, we're working with as many stakeholders as we can so we understand where we are this year and where we might be able to move next year. This gentleman has a question. Straight in there, Michael. Go, go on then. Oh, yeah. Um, do you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> um, Hi there. Uh, just in response, Adam, I, I understand your um, view on different types of, of events, etc. My background actually was in events, and I've been working in sustainability for the last eight, eight, eight years. And, and looking around here and seeing the, the, the topics on the agenda, etc., etc., I think the problem is that people don't understand what sustainability means, right? And, 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 and sustainability is, is, is all about a balance. And it's, all, it's a balance between people, profit, and planet. And the, the, the event sector at the moment is completely obsessed with the planet aspects of this. And what's going to happen is that we are so obsessed about this that we're going to forget about our profitability, and we're going to forget about um, uh, the people that are involved and impact on people and we're actually going to do ourselves a huge disservice and 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 I, I think that really so so when someone asks about um, you know the chairs or the tables or whatever it is or the carpets the fact that you know you can't hear in a hall because there's no carpet is not sustainable right so you've got to understand the word and the balance and what it means and I think that's, that, that's a huge problem in the event sector. I, I, I totally agree that's with that. Point. I totally agree with that. And, you know, we, work, we are working with other partners to try and support and help us introduce that at this event. So Diversity Alliance, you've probably seen it here. We work with Eventwell and others. And I think, to a degree, it's where the mindset of the industry is right at this moment in time. Because I think they feel it's the, it, from an events perspective here right now live, it's the area that they can tackle first. People, I think that's divided into two areas. 
One is that's how you operate as a company, your culture and how that feeds back to your team and then how they feed that back into their own lives. But also I think, and I think we have this as a responsibility as an events industry is that we are the roots underneath every tree of industry. We are the thing that supports every, we, there is an event for every sector, there is an association for every sector, there are you know, conferences, trade shows, etc., etc. And I think we have a duty as event organizers to think how can we feed that message back to our audience as part of our, the way that we support sustainability in the industry, whether it's ecological, people, and profit. It's really interesting you say profit because that's one of the interesting things to me about now we're talking to more supply chain and others and working in the industry, whether that's recycling companies or others. There seems to be this uneasiness for some companies that making profit shouldn't go along with being sustainable. It should almost be done to break free, or in some cases it feels like they actually like to lose money. Which is, if you, don't, if you want to reinvest profits, I think that's a totally different conversation, but I think by making money, by making profit, you can either reinvest that as a business and do more sustainable things for the sector that you're working in. You can reinvest that in your team, making them better or more looked after, more nurtured, more, more, more well. And I think, you know, at the very least, if you've, just, if you've just got a load of money left over at the end of the year and you want to do something with it, there are a huge amount of charitable organizations and things looking for donations and looking for health and support. I don't think anyone did it. I don't think that should, there should be this, like, we can't make money and still be sustainable or providing sustainable solutions. Thanks, Adam. No, I appreciate the question as well, Marco. Thank you. I just, I just wanted to bring it back a little bit as well because I think equally it's about knowledge and sharing education and I, I, I must say Leanne every time I speak to an event organizer they turn around and say why don't these people tell us these things if only I knew so can, can you maybe take a bit of time just to talk about some of the things that you've introduced here from Reconomy to Rewind to some of the uh, show ready just just maybe just if you could just take little snapshots for us of some of the things that that you're seeing and maybe not seeing here yeah, of course. And, and I think to, to your point, um, there is a fine balance from, from our side of the, the event sector that there's a balance between organisers with us wanting to be sustainable, thinking it's out of their reach because they, they perceive sustainability to be expensive, when actually, in, in the, the, from us, the point of, from this session is that engaging with us can help you understand sustainability more and that it actually is reachable. Um, Reconomy is, a, is a, a big thing for us in, in our graphics division. So we appointed, um, we became a member of FESPA and as part of that membership with FESPA onboarded a contract with uh, Reconomy to look after our graphics waste. Um, they effectively, from a sustainability point, we bail and bundle our graphics now within our warehousing to reduce the amount of vehicles coming to take that product away um, and that then goes back into depending on the product so where we print to which is now a sweat board based uh, paper based product that goes back into the paper recycling stream so it's just recycled as part of that stream um, where we very little use Fomex now Fomex has become a product while while you can you know see it on the walls in here it's a reusable product in the, you know, the plain black panels that are utilized here, they are cleaned and reused on multiple events. But when they aren't used, Reconomy take those away and repurpose that stock to become traffic cones. We all sit in traffic jams and you can sit and look and think that is a, you know, the part of that could be a graphic panel. Um, so that's, Reconomy is a, a, is a big thing for us in that respect. Um, Show Ready is a, another product which we launched just before the pandemic, but it is a cost-effective solution for space-only exhibitors um, to have a 100% re re sustainable, reusable, recyclable product on their stand. So minimizing the need for build and burn stands. So that, that's, that's really taken off in, 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 in that. Um, and in some instances, we can deliver upwards of 70 stands to a show. So it's a really popular product. And, and carpet, because I, sorry, I've no, geeked, no, no. I geeked out on your carpet, by the way. So, so uh, to, to share some of the, the, um, the stats there. And so, from, from MJ's, obviously, they're, they're around the corner here with Rewind. We, we utilize Rewind 
um, for some contracts we have for, contra um, for carpet. Um, their tagline of no carpet, not no carpet is, a, is, is really is, is great. Um, and for us, it's about talking to us about carpet sustainability. Um, standard exhibition cord carpet is, is a recycled product. It goes um, to be recycled to plastic pellets, which go into utilize within construction industry. Um, so even your standard exhibition cord carpet is, is recyclable, but Rewind is the first cradle to cradle um, product in that sector where uh, there is no water utilized in its production, there's no latex utilized in its production, and when it's recycled, it can actually become carpet again. So um, it's a, a really good um, development in the carpet sector, and actually from a cost perspective, is very marginal in difference and, and the more it is utilized it can only be a good thing for the cost and bring that down and a lot of the uh the instigation for this session was that perhaps not many perhaps people don't ask enough or perhaps we're not there to offer them yeah. these solutions enough how often are you asked uh, as, as gs about these sort of things or how how difficult is it to try and engage organizers and say hang on look we're here, we're doing this stuff regardless of whether you use us or not, it's there. These are products that are out there for you that we're doing on your behalf. Is, is there a slight, come on, ask me, let me tell you about it. Um, we, that is definitely something we're trying to do now rather than the, the, the classic of, you know, a, a very transactional thing where, oh, we need 500 square meters of build and this much carpet and this much power packages. Um, we're trying to have those conversations to make sure that people are aware and organizers are aware of what's in the market, what's new, and, and how we are working now to be that kind of sustainable business. Um, it, it's not as common as it should be, which is kind of from the hidden supplier perspective about engaging with us um, and talking to us. You know, in, in the last six months, I probably had one tender where sustainability has been a major subject in it. Um, otherwise, it really has, you know, it, it is still, we're still thought of as, a, a contractor that can deliver a certain product. It's, it's not around what else can be done. So it's an education piece, because I think a lot of the times um, some organizers see the venue maybe as a conversation, or the caterers as a conversation, but perhaps, perhaps think, well, I'm not going to have much out there, so it's about education. No, fair enough. And Adam, I don't know, whether, just, just in working with, with Leanne and her team, so like how much has it surprised you, the amount of stuff they've got? Or has it pleasantly surprised you? Or has it been like, actually, I kind of knew that was going along, but it's nice to see it in, in, in action. I think, I think we've definitely learned some things along the way, for sure. You know, my assumption was that certain elements of even our fabric wasn't recyclable, reusable. It actually is, you know, using a Rewind, isn't it? I think, oh, uh, not, carpets. Carpets, rewind. yeah, carpets, sorry. Um, you know, so that's, that's where you have to, as a organizer or that person responsible for procurement and things like that, you have to be having conversations with your uh, supply chain, not only just about the products and services and the solutions that are providing you, but them as a company as well. You know, just because a company can supply you a sustainable solution, does that does not mean that that stretches to them as a company and I think that's where you really need to get granular with it it's like well what are your process is internally you know are you are you off grid are you doing other sustainable solutions uh, you know what's your logistics look like etc 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 and don't just focus in on the product and the solution focusing on the company and the team and the culture and things like that so we've done, you know without asking those questions without building those relationships you, you just don't know you make assumptions Fantastic. Um, I was, if it's okay, I, was, I wanted to sort of open it out into the into the wider group here. And if there's, I, you know, Michael made a really lovely point there, which which, which gave us some, some some good insight. I've got a few thoughts, uh, a few uh, questions on Slido as well. Um, before I go to Slido, just because I'm a luddite, is there any other? Um, has anyone got any hand raising to do? Any other com comments they want to make? Um, it, this is no, by no means a prerequisite. It's absolutely fine not to. It's kind of why Slido exists. Right, okay, let's do Slido. Um, okay, uh, whoever wants this one, but um, someone, uh, Camilla, has put in there, the best kept secret is crew. Um, carbon neutral crew with an action plan helping us to net zero by 2030. Our diverse employer and SE connection crew CIC on your radars. How much do you know? Sorry, this is new to me, so you no, have to forgive to me, me well. if I... Gone would that, would, that, would that person be willing to tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah. Thank you. Can I give you? A, yeah. <laughs> that's, 
Because you might, you, you might be better off up here, quite frankly. <laughs> no, but you're all one. good. Uh, yeah, so Connection Crew is a social enterprise. We've been in the sector for 18 years. We do things like building the BBC stage at Glastonbury and building the Ideal Home Show. We've got about 200 crew and 25% of our crew are ex-homeless. We've also got a net zero 2030 uh, commitment and a carbon neutral crew. Um, up until COVID, none of my team ever wanted to tell our clients that we were a social enterprise. It was like, keep it quiet, they're gonna think we're a charity. It's like, no, 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 we're not a charity. Actually, now might be the time that we start talking a bit more bravely about the fact that we're a social enterprise and we're a little bit different. But um, I think there's a, uh, a shift in the sector, I hope. I think we're seeing this now with events like this. And so thanks for putting this on, it's, uh, it's brilliant. Maybe we can have you back next year to talk about that a little bit more. Very happy to. And, and, yeah, would, you, again, do people ask you as a, as a business about your own, um, uh, your own footprint as well? Because I understand that getting crew from all over the place or from a, in the same way as food, to locally produce food, is a locally yeah. produced crew. Yeah. It's quite a big cost locally in terms of... Locally produced crew. We'll, yeah, sorry we'll about that. that. No, no. Did I just commoditize your no, entire no. business there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah local is important for us. About 80% of our work is within two hours of the M25, but we right. constantly get asked for quoting elsewhere. Um, we really want to focus on London, and this is where our crew is, and it makes for a better life experience for our crew, not traveling for half the day to, to unload a lorry and come back again. So we're really happy about the shift to local, as well as social enterprise, as well as diverse, as well as sustainable. And so we think we're well-placed to address this, but um, uh, come and catch us, other crew companies. I hope, I hope we uh, stimulate the industry to move a bit more. That's, that's great. great. It's no, another great example of a hidden, um, you know, hidden supplier, so to speak. Um, here's a good one for you, Adam. Um, why do uh, ETL and ESL not enable virtual attendance of the talks? As registration is free anyway, it would be significant increase in the reach for great talks. I have to make that person, unfortunately, they are. Oh, good. Yeah, okay, good answer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, content is being streamed from uh, across the show. We do a curated stream of content uh, for both events. Um, all content is also recorded and offered free and on-demand post-event. Okay, no. fair enough, fair enough. There you go, let's spy that one, isn't it? Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it might be the gentleman that's asked the question. Yeah, well played. Exactly. Yeah. I was just about to right to reply, I reckon. No, yeah, I, don't I mean, let him off the hook. I, I kind of expected that answer, cool. but to be honest, I was looking about, uh, for it because people were asking me, like, hey, can we actually see, I, I talked yesterday on, on ETL, and they asked me, can we actually see your talk? And I was like, I have no idea, to be honest. And I asked the registration contact, and I was like, will it be streamed? I, w I never got an answer. So yeah, there you it's go. It's nice that you stream it, but then you should also communicate about it. I, I think that's a, that's a, that's a sorry, go on. I, I, absolutely, and I appreciate that. I think one of the things that, like, like our mantra is, like, ev every event should be hybrid. So we don't actually promote, we, we don't go out there and say we are hybrid. We, we, we believe each the lifeblood of the event. Every event we produce is on that format. So I appreciate that it's not being communicated to you probably effectively. So I'll take that feedback on board and, and find you know, ways to, to do that better. Um, but our mantra is it's, everything should be like this. You know? And it's not, just, it's not just a sustainability thing, it's an accessibility thing. You know, not everybody is in a place physically or mentally where they can attend an event like this. You know, you know, we've I, I saw it over the last couple of days the number of speakers that couldn't even un, end up making it to the show. We've also streamed speakers in, so we've had num numerous speakers, and the session has the, the speakers have been fully remote um, rather than travelling from and met places like America and things like that to the show. But I'll take that feedback on board. That's brilliant. And I think um, I'll close it here because uh, we're, we're out of time. But I think that just underlines that there's so many stuff that's hidden. And I think so many of the delegates and organizers and contractors want to tell their story. And you can't always tell every story to every single person. I think my personal thing is assume that the people in charge are trying to do the best thing possible, that they might come up short. But it's really nice, Adam, to hear you so open to criticism and to, 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 to learning. And it's really nice to see that GES doing some great stuff out there. Um, I'm a bit of a fan of but um, it's quite nice to see what you're going to do next. So, so look, give it up for the guys, and, and, and thanks again for coming along.